This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we will show you how to join sections of tubing together with splines. We'll be showing using rivets and then adhesive. Long lengths of curved tubing is not easily shipped, but cutting it down to size and joining sections together using splines makes long or curved tubing easier to transport. It also typically adds to the strength of the tubing at the joint. We'll start by showing rivets. Greg is responsible for bending tubing. He's going to show us how it's done. Take out any burrs by filing the inside of the outer tubing. To join 1 inch stainless steel, use a 7 inch stainless steel tubing and we've cut it to about 6 to 7 inches in length. Greg will take some masking tape and wrap it around the spline tubing about 2 or 3 inches from the end of the spline tubing. He'll then insert the spline into the 1 inch tubing, pushing the masking tape past its entry point and take off any masking tape that may come off. Now that will secure the spline so that we can easily drill it without it moving. Our spline tubing was about seven inches so you can see he left three and a half inches exposed. He places it in a vise with a protective leather sheave to prevent damage to the tubing and then he uses a punch and creates a pilot hole about one inch from the end of the outer tubing. This will help keep our drill bit from wandering when we drill the tubing. We're using a 3 16th inch drill bit and we lubricated it with some lubricating oil. We'll start to drill over top of our pilot hole and we'll stop and re-lubricate the drill bit to prolong its life. We are using a cobalt drill bit for stainless steel and heavy metal. That is important. And here we go all the way through both the outer tubing and the inside tubing. Sailrite also sells aluminum tubing. It is much easier to drill. We're going to start out by showing an aluminum rivet in this stainless steel tubing. This is a 3 16 inch diameter and it accommodates an eighth inch to a quarter inch grip range. Sailrite does not recommend aluminum rivets for stainless steel tubing. They are easier to set, but not as strong as stainless steel rivets. We'll be showing how to set stainless steel rivets next. Now we'll take our second one inch tubing and slide it over the spline. We'll then take our punch and make a pilot hole about one inch from the joint. Then we'll take it back to the drill press and follow that same procedure for drilling a second hole right into that pilot hole that we made with the punch. Now we're going to use the rivet stainless steel for Bimini and Dodger frames. It's available from Sailrite. As mentioned earlier, this is a much tougher rivet and it takes a lot of effort for the mandrel to break appropriately, but it can be done. Now the rivet's been inserted in the hole and we'll use the standard riveting tool and notice that we're placing one handle against a table and we're pressing a lot of pressure down on this riveting tool. It is important that your riveting tool have metal handles. Hopefully they're not cast metal because cast metal handles may break. Our mandrel now separated and the rivet is now set appropriately in the tubing. At the top you can see the aluminum rivet and below you can see the stainless steel rivet. We recommend stainless steel rivets with all stainless steel tubing. For applications where rivet heads and the tubing are not desired, you can use an adhesive to join the tubing together. We'll be using 3M Fast Cure 5200 adhesive. We will run a bead of the adhesive around the spline or inner tubing. This spline tubing has been cut to 6 or 7 inches in length. We do not recommend using adhesive for applications where a lot of strength will be required, such as in a Dodger or a Bimini. We recommend using rivets in those applications. You can see Greg inserting the spline inside the one inch stainless steel tubing and he rolls it as he pushes it into position. He'll stop about three and a half inches and then use more of the 3M 5200 on the end of the spline. Then he'll push the other half of the one inch tubing onto the spline until it's butted up with the opposite tubing. 
Then he'll use a rag and clean up any glue excess. It's a good idea to leave the tubing sit overnight to cure. Using adhesive to join tubing is recommended for drapery applications where appearance is key. And it's also great for awning applications where tubing hardware must be pushed down the length of tubing and must pass over the joint. It's your loyal patronage to say right that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.